correlation consternation. Today we're going to go over what I think is one of the easiest concepts of algebra, correlation. It's easy if you can just think logically. To understand correlation, do we have to work out some complicated formula or something like that? No. Are we going to have to learn to do something with a graphing calculator to do this? No. Understanding correlation has much less to do with numbers than it does about common sense. We will, however, at the end, use the calculator to give a number to correlation, the correlation coefficient r. In algebra, correlation is how two variables relate to one another. Let's use an example. As men get older, what happens to the hair on their head? In my instance, I had about 100% at age 20, as shown by the red dot, to maybe about 75% remaining at age 40, and a gradual loss continues as I age. Maybe by age 60, I'll have 50% left or so. And by age 80, 30% or so if I should live that long. But for a true scatter plot, we would survey different men of different ages, and this is what that plot might look like. What we're looking for is the direction of the trend of those points. We can draw our estimated trend line that won't exactly fit the points, but that best fits the points we have and it might be something like this blue line. Since the trend goes down as age increases, we say that this is an example of negative correlation. But do you see that you could have known this was a negative correlation even before drawing any points just by using your brain? I hope so. Use your brain. It's a great habit to get into. Here's a problem about correlation. Monica collected data on the ages and heights of a random sample of 6th, 7th, and 8th grade students at her school. If she plots the data on a scatter plot, what relationship will she most likely see between age and height? The possible answers A, negative correlation, B, no correlation, A, positive correlation, and D, constant correlation. This is basically a just use your brain and think problem. Can you remember when you were in 6th, 7th, and 8th grade? What were you doing during this time? Do you remember telling your mom, my clothes are getting bigger? I guess I must be shrinking. Of course not. You were growing. And when time passes and people get taller, that's a positive correlation between age and height. I just taught an early start class at a high school for incoming ninth graders, and while I don't expect a lot from them, it's still astonishing that most would get this easy a problem incorrect. While many things can be defined as variables and correlated, one thing you will see often is time, like in this problem. The graph below shows the relationship between the distance in miles a delivery truck traveled and the number of hours each delivery took which best describes the relationship shown on the graph? A, negative trend, B, positive trend, C, constant trend, D, no trend. Here's a red line drawn to match the points as well as possible. Which way is the line going from left to right? It's going up, which means that the correlation or trend is positive, answer B. If you just have input data and notice that the data from the input and output values are both going up in the same direction, or input and output values are both decreasing the same direction, you have positive correlation. But when you have one side going up in value and the other side going down, or vice versa, you have negative correlation. We've covered what positive and negative correlation look like. What about something like this, the relationship between a person's height and income? What would you expect a scatter plot of this relationship or correlation between these two variables to look like? Would it be positive or negative? Here's the scatter plot of a sampling of persons relating height and annual income. Can you see a pattern here? Since there is no clearly discernible pattern, we say that this relationship exhibits no correlation, which is what we would expect because pay scales for jobs are not based on a person's height. Now, if we were to change this relationship to be between years of education and income, should there be something different? Yes. We can make out a trend here shown by a line in blue. Whether a correlation is positive or negative is related to whether the trend line best fitting the points has a positive slope or a negative slope. This positively sloped trend line indicates a positive correlation, whereas this scatter plot of life expectancy compared to the amount of cigarettes smoked is best fitted by a line with a negative slope demonstrating negative correlation. Now we will examine the concept of strength of correlation. Strength of correlation has to do with how tightly the points of the scatter plot fit the trend line used to fit the points. A scatter plot like this one where the points fit the line pretty tightly is said to have strong correlation. Whereas a scatter plot like this one where the points do not fit as tightly along the line of best fit is said to have weak or weaker or lower correlation. 
We'll next go over how to quantify or put a number value on what correlation is, but before doing so, I beseech you, I implore you to always think first before going to a calculator. It's only by thinking first that you will be able to correctly interpret what you calculate. If it looks like no correlation, don't even take the trouble to calculate. The results will probably be meaningless. Uh, now I would like to be clear. This next section showing calculator use is for Texas Instruments 83 and TI-84 series graphing calculators. And to measure how well the points fit the line, we can use what we call the correlation coefficient R. I have placed all the coordinates here in STAT. I got here by pressing the STAT button on the graphing calculator just below the delete key, then enter. The X values are under the L1 column and the Y values under the L2 column. Now go to the Y equals key for this view. Activate the plotting feature by going up to plot 1 and pressing enter so plot 1 is darkened. Take a look at your plotted points by pressing zoom in the middle of the keys at the top. Scroll down to 9, zoom stat. Press enter. I always like to take the time to look at this first because you will immediately see if you've done something wrong. This looks pretty good, and by pretty good I mean very much like the points on the original graph. To calculate the R value or the correlation coefficient, we need to activate the calculator's diagnostic tool. Access the catalog by pressing second, then the zero key at the bottom of the keypad which gives you the catalog view. Go down to Diagnostic by pressing the X to the negative 1 on the left side of the keypad, which has the green D above it in the alpha mode. Scroll down to Diagnostic On. Press Enter. Press Enter again. Now it says Done. Now find the line of best fit with the R value or correlation coefficient by pressing Stat. Arrow once to the right to get to Calc. Scroll down to 4, Linear Regression. Press Enter. Press enter again. This is the equation for the line of best fit. Y equals about 2.58x plus 30. And this is the R value or correlation coefficient, about 0.7. Possible R values range from 0, which is no correlation, to as high as 1, which is perfect correlation. Depending on the situation, something above 0.8 can be seen as strong correlation. Having gone as far as we have, let's do one more thing and enter the equation to see how it fits our points. Press Y equals. Press the VARS key between the program and clear keys. Scroll down to 5, statistics. Press enter. Arrow twice to the right to equation. Press enter. See how the equation is pasted into Y1? Now graph by pressing the graph key. This is what the calculator determined is the line of best fit. Quite similar to the one drawn in blue earlier by hand. Now I want to look at the other scatter plot we saw earlier, the correlation between the amount of cigarette smoked and life expectancy. The reason I want to do this is the relationship seems more strongly correlated than the one we did with the 0.7 R value, and also to see if there's anything different about a negative correlation situation. Here are all the points entered under L1 and L2. I invite you to do the same on your graphing calculator. Go to Y equals and clear out the equations, if any. Let's look at the points by pressing zoom, scroll down to 9, zoom stat, press enter. We see our points plotted looking quite a bit like those we looked at in the original graph. Now let's find the line of best fit and the correlation coefficient or R value. Press stat, arrow once to the right to the calc menu, scroll down to 4, linear regression. Press enter. Press enter again. Here we have the line of best fit, y equals about negative 6.9x plus 84. Note that the R value or correlation coefficient is very close to 1, about 0.99, when 1 is a perfect correlation. Except that this negative sign in front means that it's a negative correlation. And here's the line of best fit. Again, note how closely this line of best fit resembles the line of best fit drawn in blue earlier. My main point here is that by hand drawing the line of best fit, you can do pretty much just as good a job of it as the linear regression feature of your graphing calculator. Really, the main thing we gain using the calculator was finding the R or correlation coefficient to get a number or quant to quantify the strength of correlation. As a quick review, a positive correlation is when the line of best fit through the points has a positive slope. A negative correlation is when the line of best fit through the points has a negative slope. When there is not a trend for the data, we say that there is no correlation. Strong correlation is when the points fit in a trend line pretty closely. Weak correlation is when the points fit a trend line pretty loosely and not tightly. We also use the graphing calculator to determine the value of R, or the correlation coefficient, a number that describes the strength of correlation. When it comes to correlation, please, please think. 
This has been Correlation Consternation. Thanks for viewing.